today i would like to talk on the topic of prostanoids which is also called as prostaglandins generally we hear this word in the context of pain and inflammation so what are these prostanoids actually so how they are originated from the, in the body and how they act in the body i would just like to give a brief idea on these prostanoids today so what does it do it mediates pain and inflammation so these prostanoids are the inflammatory mediators or it, it is a pain mediator it also modulates smooth muscle tone like contraction of smooth muscle or relaxation of smooth muscle so these smooth muscles are generally present in many areas in our body like in the airway passages in the lungs or in the gastrointestinal tract in the reproductive tracts urinary tracts even in the blood vascular system is composed mm. of a smooth muscle it also helps in the water and ion transport so this smooth muscle also helps in the release of prostaglandins so that is why sometimes when a person gets infected with some allergen that would activate the smooth muscle production of this prostaglandins and that is why it also leads to inflammatory mediators and that also leads to the pain and fever so this is all this is about the general idea of the prostaglandins so how are these prostaglandins or prostanoids are formed in our body actually they are generally act locally in an autocrine or paracrine fashion these are produced from the arachidonic acid which is actually an unnatural polyunsaturated fatty acid this is arachidonic acid which is made up of 20 carbon polyunsaturated omega 6 fatty acid so why is it called omega 6 fatty acid because here when we this is a the, we have to count from this side omega count from omega from this side 1 2 3 4 5 6 at the sixth position there is a double bond so that is why these are these are called omega 6 fatty acids and this contains four double bonds so these are these are all also called as icosatetraenoic acids so arachidonic acid is also called as icosatetraenoic acid icosa means at 20 carbon length tetra means four enoic means there are four double bonds acid as this has a functional group of acid 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 function carboxylic acid group this is a acid so arachidonic acid is also called as icosatetraenoic acid and this would generally present in the phospholipid bilayer in the plasma membranes of the cells from these prostaglandins are formed these prostaglandins are nothing but these are oxygenated metabolites oxygenated metabolites because this is form these metabolites are formed by the oxygenation of the arachidonic acid this is an enzyme called cox1 and 2 these are two isozymes cox1 and cox2 isozymes cox means cyclooxygenase so in the first step of the arachidonic acid oxygenation with the help of a cox enzyme it forms into pgg2 here there is an oxygenation taking place at the at this position and then further oxidation takes place with the help of the same enzyme and leads to the formation of pgh2 with the help of peroxidase enzyme it becomes pgh2 and from there pgh2 we we get different prostaglandins pgd2 pge2 pgf2 alpha prostacyclin and thromboxane so here there is a common structural group of pros five membered prostane ring which we call it as a prostane ring all contains five carbon cyclic five carbon ring look at this one this one this this but except thromboxane a2 this has a six membered prostane ring 
with ether oxygen in the first entry. So this is about the general chemistry of the arachidonic acid. And we shall go into de in detail about the receptors and, and the drugs which act in, which mediate this uh, pathway. So we, we have already discussed that arachidonic acid is present in the lipid bilayers, in the phospholipid membranes in the plasma membrane. So what is this phospholipid membrane? We know the plasma membrane contains a lipid bilayer which is having hydropolar head groups and the outer layer, outermost layer and inner hydrophobic layer. So this contains two layers, so this is called as a bilayer. And this is a saturated lipid bilayer in which there are no double bonds. Generally, if there are no double bonds, the lipid bilayer looks like this. With and here they give a representation of a double bond present in in the lipid bilayer. Though, so where are these blue colors are there? This this represents double bond is present in that inner hydrophobic region, and that too this is monounsaturated. So there is only one double bond in the region. But in the arachidonic acid, there are four double bonds, so it is polyunsaturated. So, whatever that it may be, the arachidonic acid is present in the innermost hydrophobic region of the plasma membrane. If you look into this, in this reaction, phospholipid bile. This this is called arachidonic acid. Arachidonic acid contains twenty carbons with four double bonds so in order to get released from arachidonic acid should be re should be released to form prostanoids it should be released from the pl plasma membrane until then it is esterified with the phospholipid membrane but with the help of phospholipase A it forms into arachidonic acid and this phospholipase A cleaves exactly here so that it forms arachidonic acid and phosphoryl inositol. So from here we know th about the next metabolic metabolism, eicosanoids, Pg, PGD2, PGE2, PGF2, alpha thromboxane are all formed from the next subsequent reactions. So talking about the receptor pharmacology. So these prostaglandins act on the receptors. Once these prostaglandins are formed, either it has to reup it has to be reuptaken to the plasma membrane or it has to go out of the cell and diffuse out of the cell and act on the other membranes on the other side in a paracrine fashion or autocrine fashion or it has to be metabolized. So there are different receptors which are called as EP recept uh, receptors and the prostanoids. EP receptors are called for prostaglandin, prostaglandin E, PGE1 receptors, PGE1 receptors, PGE2 receptors and all. These are PGD receptor, PGF receptor, PGI receptor, prostacyclin receptor, thromboxane receptor. So this is a receptor structure, this is a plasma membrane which contains a phospholipid bilayer which is a green color and this is an extracellular surface of the receptor which has a 7 membrane trans transmembrane helix, is a GPCR, G protein coupled receptor mediated one receptor. So this is an N terminal region and this is C terminal, carboxyl terminal. And EP receptors show a differential expression like uh, uh, EP1, EP2, EP3, EP4. These are four, types, four subtypes. The mRNAs of the EP receptors have differential expression in different regions. For example, uh, functional antagonism is present, is observed 
in uh, thromboxane receptor thrombo in the thromboxane acting on the thromboxane receptor leading to the platelet aggregation but at the same time prostacyclin acts on the ip receptor and which can also help in the inhibition of platelet aggregation thromboxane receptor activates platelet aggregation and this one inhibits platelet aggregation but the expression of the receptor the different the expression of the receptor and the expression of the cyclooxygenase enzyme would balance this reaction balance the general physiology of the when general physiology and thereby leads to not leads to the normal condition and this prostaglandins also activate ppar gamma which is a ppar gamma and ppar delta which is our nuclear transcription factors so once these are formed these prostaglandins are formed and so how finally how are they inactivated so these are normally inactivated in pulmonary circulation so in if they are to be inactivated in the pulmonary circulation they have these prostaglandins should reach the lung surface in the lung smooth muscle cells so it should pass through to that regions and then it is inactivated and the inactivation steps take place by this reaction with the help of a dehydrogenase enzyme so this oxygen group is transformed into a keto group so dehydrogenation takes place so 15 keto pg2 is formed and then in the subsequent reactions beta oxidation through the beta oxidation pathway it leads to short chain metabolites so so this is the general prostanoid catabolism so what are the drugs which actually modulate this pg signaling so in order to this generally we know that these drugs are the, this is the pathway in which mediates pain and inflammation so in order to reduce the pain and inflammation we generally use the drugs like ibuprofen indomethacin diclofenac these are competitive inhibitors these come under the classification of non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs generally called as nsaids there are irreversible inhibitors like aspirin which binds to the cox enzyme irreversibly and there are selective cox2 inhibitors like valdecoxib rofecoxib and celecoxib so why these are selective cox2 inhibitors are there so why are these useful and why some of the drugs like aspirin should not should be avoided these drugs these are cox inhibitors cyclooxygenase as we already know that these uh prostaglandins are helpful in the formation of the gastrointestinal layers in the in maintaining the gastrointestinal tone cyclooxygenase enzyme helps in the formation of this gastrointestinal layer so whenever if you continuously take this ibuprofen indomethacin or di in these cox inhibitors this would lead to the gastrointestinal injury so that is why people should not people of uh, who are having any gastric in gastrointestinal ulcers uh, they should be avoided with uh, continuous use of these ibuprofen or indomethacin or any other nsaid and aspirin is also is uh, inactivates thromboxane so it helps in the platelet it helps in the uh, inhibition of platelet aggregation or also relieves pain and inflammation so in order because this cox1 and cox1 enzyme helps in the formation of this prostacyclin inhibition of prostacyclin especially in the gastrointestinal layer so a, a special cox2 inhibitors are used like valdecoxib rofecoxib and celecoxib these would selectively inhibit the cox2 enzyme and then relieve the pain but the side effect for these selective cox2 inhibitors is that they have they can lead to the patients to myocardial infarction and stroke so that is why these cox2 inhibitors should be avoided in the patients of uh, have patients who have having any cardiovascular disorders 
So that side effects for the COX, general COX inhibitors are gastrointestinal bleeding and renal failure. Because of this complex pattern of these COX enzyme inhibitors, COX1 and COX2, a specific PG receptor agonists or antagonists are, have come, which actually very specific to that, uh, to that particular receptor. But these are having one of the, one of the uh, drawbacks is that they act only at the site of action. So that should be act only locally in that particular site, wherever the site which we want to be get treated. If they are given systemically, it, it may lead to the adverse effects. It, for example, the drug latinoprost is there, which is generally used for the patients of glaucoma. It comes in as a eye drops and this would reduce the intraocular pressure by using by removing the aqueous fluid mm. through the uveal tract in the eye and this is a PG receptor ag agonist and dinoprostone is, is a drug for this is a thromboxane TXA agonist the dinoprostone is a drug actually which is our PG2 analog is used in uh, as an abo abortifacient and uh, even alprostadil these two drugs are used as an abortifacient and also helps in the dilatation and uh, ripening and dilatation of the cervix which helps in the uh, in the in the labor during the labor time Misoprostol is a drug generally this can be given to the patients who are con current uh, simultaneously taking any cox inhibitor because this would avoid the gastrointestinal bleeding mm -hmm. misoprostol is a it is a pge1 analog epoprostanol is a drug which helps in the it is a prostacycline analog is used in the treatment of pulmonary hypertension Ramatroban is a thromboxane analog, thromboxane antagonist used in allergic rhinitis. Latinoprost is not a thromboxane, it's a prostaglandin analog itself used in glaucoma. So these are the different drugs used in the uh, at in different at different uh, conditions like rhinitis, hypertension, and brain during the abo abortion. Dinoprostone comes as a suppository, it is given through the vaginal route and inhibits the it and it is used in the during the labor time. Thank you for watching this.